This video is sponsored by Acuity Scheduling. Acuity Scheduling is a flexible scheduling software that I actually used for years. It's how our clients booked Blanco and I'm a really big fan. More on them later. Um, hey, welcome to a new video. My name is Sarah Dici, it rhymes with Peachy. I've been doing so much computer work late into the night that I thought, hey, let's like share some of the cool Mac tools, the Mac apps that I use every single day, all the time. And you know, maybe these aren't the most original, but oof, if you're not using them, you're missing out. Did I say my name is Sarah Dici Rance of Peachy yet? I don't know if I said that. I have to say being 100% Mac OS for over a year now has been uh, kind of nice. And now that the new Mac Studios are out, at some point, you know, uh, squirreling away the monies for that, at some point, I'm gonna upgrade to that. But not, not yet. <laughs> um, okay, number one, Clean Shot. Or is it Clean Shot X? Clean Shot X. Oh wait, a little sidebar about Hidden Bar. Look at this, boop, boop. Boop. I was actually watching another YouTuber's Mac app videos um, and they shouted out this hidden bar. And I was like, oh, this is so great because I have so much stuff uh, up on my top bar now. Um, I, I don't need all this stuff. Hidden bar, boom. So if you don't know about that one, you, you know. Okay, Clean Shot X. Oh my gosh, this is the best screenshot app that has ever existed. Upon installing, you press all the buttons and it makes it to where the screenshot keyboard shortcut is exactly the same. So Shift Command 4, you're gonna screenshot something um, just like you're used to, but it keeps your screenshot down here on essentially a clipboard and it doesn't go away unless you swipe away. Screenshot screenshot so here's multiple screenshots and they just keep stacking and they will not go away unless you swipe away but even if you swipe them away they're not going to disappear you just do the shift option x and boom you have all of your screenshots on essentially your clipboard and you can scroll um, press enter and it appears back on your screen and you can click this markup tool and it just has so many great ways that you can modify screenshots beyond um, the standard screenshot tool on Mac. You have the rectangle tool. I use this so much um, to say, hey, this is missing or do this, do that, right? You have the blur tool, which is so handy. Highlight text and it keeps it on the text, which is very nice. You have the different crops, but more importantly, you can add a lot of different backgrounds. Now, this is so great. You can add your own wallpaper as the background and it adds this uh, nice like circular border to things, right? It just looks so pretty. Or you can add plain color. Colors. You can have different alignments and they have a lot of great gradients here. And again, you can add your own wallpapers. And this has been so incredibly handy for me, uh, honestly, just for videos. I used to do all of my screenshot stuff within DaVinci Resolve, but now I just make my screenshots look pretty and nice in CleanShot X. I save it, it goes back to uh, the little clipboard thing. And then I just drag and drop over to my folder, my video folder, um, wherever I'm keeping the assets. And I know a lot of people probably already use clean shot but man I'm putting this as number one just for like the five individuals that don't know about it you have to download it like why, why are you still like positive it download it yeah, and then come back <laughs> Number two is Paste. Now, this is another app, a part of the set app ecosystem. Um, they have a lot of great apps like Downy that I use for downloading YouTube videos. Uh, they also have Clean My Mac. I don't know if Paste is the best. It was just in set app. So I downloaded it and now I love it and I can't exist without it. So just like Shift Option H uh, brings up my clean shot screenshots, Shift Option V brings up uh, essentially my clipboard for everything that I've pasted. And as you can tell, it keeps the applications that you pasted from on the top of um, the selection. So we have Chrome, Notes, we have an image that was on my clipboard, right? And this is just a beautiful way to actually look at your clipboard and recall previous things that you copied. Yes, we all know that Windows has traditionally just had a better copy and paste experience. The fact that they just like have a clipboard by default. Um, it's crazy that you have to install uh, other apps to get it on the Mac, but this paste app is really great. And something that I enjoy uh, that is also a part of this app is called the paste stack. So you're gonna do the same thing, shift option, but now you're gonna hit C for copy and I'll show you how you use this. I'm just gonna select multiple different things of text that I want to paste, right? So copy, 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 copy. And as you can see, it is uh, popping up on my stack. And then if I go somewhere else, like Google Chrome or something where I actually want to paste this text, as I paste it, you see it disappearing from the paste stack. 
I love it. It's so handy. <laughs> Number three, chat GPT. I know this isn't a super original one, but a power user of chat GPT, my husband, John, he still uses it via the web. I'm gonna have to like steal his computer and actually download the Mac OS app on it. It's, it's getting ridiculous. But if you do not have the Mac OS app yet, what are you doing? It makes it so much easier to use. There is just little friction. In the same way that you would hit command spacebar to access spotlight, instead you're gonna hit option spacebar and it automatically uh, puts a chat GPT prompt up there. You can drag your screenshot over, you can type you know, all of the things that you need to type. I just use it all of the time. Um, and when I tweet about this, a lot of people are like, what do you even use it for? Honestly, 70% of the time is just replacing a lot of the prompts that I would put into my search engine, just I would Google. But there's actually a lot of cool stuff that I've been able to do with it. I have been um, doing a lot of health stuff recently, I'm having you know a couple breakthroughs, which is good. I'm actually solving some things, um, but I got really diligent about my blood work and now uh, I am you know supplementing and taking different vitamins. Um, but I put all of that in chat GPT. I know some people will be like, oh, that's private information, why would you do that? Honestly guys, at this point, I don't care. I'm just trying to figure out how to live my best life. I don't think the robots are going to weaponize the fact that I'm extremely vitamin D deficient uh, anytime soon, but the value I get from it, it just surpasses what I um, would be scared of, if that makes sense. You can think that that's wrong and that's okay. Anyways, you know, I'll let it know how long my cycle is and then it tells me at what times of my cycle, the three different times that I should get my blood drawn because depending on uh, when you are in your cycle, certain hormones should be up, should be down, and that was really helpful for me. And then I can basically put in my lab report that is a lot of different values everywhere. It's just a PDF. It's very hard to sit there and manually just like copy and paste the values. So I'll put in the PDF and essentially ChatGPT in its memory has the order of all of the biomarkers that I have in an Excel spreadsheet. And it's able to pull all the biomarkers uh, from the PDF and then export it to me in just a CSV and then I just take that copy and paste it into my Excel spreadsheet and you know I'm able to see the trends and all of those things. Super cool right? But then you can take it a step further and say hey here was my blood over six months what's wrong with me right? It's a little bit more in depth with that. But that's an example of a cool unique way that I've been using it and it's been extremely helpful um, but if I'm going to be honest yeah, like 70% of all of my chat GPT uh, queries are not that cool. I actually took an entire day and just vibe coded this really cool web app. That's for an uh, entirely different video, maybe one day. I'm just out here having fun. So download the chat GPT Mac app. <laughs> It's so good. It's not even like the best model. It's just, they they hooked me first, right? And the app is on my computer and I use it all the time. That's just what it is now. I've been hearing great things about Anthropics 3.7 Sonnet, but I just, I'm in the GPT ecosystem now. Oh my gosh, this next one is so clutch. But before I get that, just a very quick word from our sponsor, Acuity Scheduling. Something that I have personally used a ton. Acuity Scheduling is a flexible scheduling software that offers calendar management, easy booking tools, client communications, secure payments, custom branding, and just so much more. As I mentioned before, I used Acuity Scheduling for Book Blanco for the creative studio space that we had here in Texas and it was so easy to use. It integrated beautifully into our Squarespace website and it really allowed me the time to just worry about the actual creative space and not the tools that we were using. So as I just mentioned, Acuity Scheduling integrates directly onto your website or you can use it on its own as a branded scheduling page and you can set it up with your own custom branding, your own custom logo and the clients can do everything on their own on your website. They can self-schedule, they can cancel, and they can rebook all on their own on your website with Acuity Scheduling. This is amazing, not just for physical studios or say like a hair salon, but also if you do you know, online consultations or you teach um, some sort of class. You can put this on your website and you just don't have to worry about it. People can book their own sessions. You can sync your own calendar with other platforms, incorporate buffers between appointments, and even set custom cancellation windows. Acuity Scheduling also helps you with payments. 
It integrates with popular payment providers like Stripe, Square, and PayPal. And you can even send contactless payment links for easy mobile payments, or you can even let your clients tap to pay in person. So listen, I am a big fan. It is always a pleasure to partner with brands that I actually use and have known their products so intimately. If you want to check it out, you can go to acuityscheduling.com slash uh, That is me. And when you're ready to launch, use my offer code saradici 20 for 20% off your first Acuity scheduling subscription. All right, back to the video and back to this very simple Mac app that is just so small, not a lot of features, but so handy. And it is called color picker. I feel like I was always just copy and pasting hex codes of colors into my notes app or just seeing a website and being like, oh, what is that color? And I would have to screenshot it, bring it into Photoshop, uh, you know, have the little color picker there and get the hex code from there. And I was just like, there has to be an easier way. And yeah, it was this Mac app. Super simple. You just hit pick color, bring the color dropper over here, boom. And then it has your recently picked colors uh, right here. When you select a color in the app, it automatically copies it to your clipboard and then you can just paste it wherever you need it. Oh, I love it. Up next, we have Screen Studio. This is a really great way to do screen recordings on your computer. If you've ever been watching a Thomas Frank video or some of the more like edutainment style channels and you're wondering, hey, how are they getting all of these really slick zoom ins, right? It could be in post production, you know, in Premiere or Resolve, it could be but Screen Studio does this automatically. So you can um, create your environment on your computer, make sure everything looks good. You can pop up your webcam. Um, so it almost looks like a Loom recording and then just do the screen record and Screen Studio does everything for you in post. If you don't like the timing with some of the zoom ins or you want to add your own, you can do that all in post in their own app. As a video editor first, some of their shortcuts and some of the ways to just like cut a clip or or, um, you know, do different things isn't super intuitive, but once you learn those shortcuts, it is super quick to go in and kind of edit things on your own. I really like that you can add the padding, you know, very similar to a uh, clean shot. I don't know why it took me so long to find an application like this because I've needed it for so long, but it feels like an app that people kind of gatekeep because it makes your screen recording look so good, so fancy. Uh, you know, like you have like a screen record professional editor for your videos, but no, it's all this app. It's really good. It's also a one-time payment, no monthly fees, which is very nice. And the last, but certainly not least app is the Camo app. I have been in this thing so much, uh, mainly because I've been working on a big product. I might as well just uh, say the thing because only two of you guys are probably gonna be watching to the end of this video. Takes the pressure off it. <laughs> I've been making this very elaborate video training uh, titled How to Podcast, and it really dives into a lot of different setups and most importantly, the overkill setup where I basically use all of my video switchers and my you know classic setup I've been using for years. I walk you through that in both video and written form and there's just, there's so much more to it if you're curious about it when it launches because I also have a free version of it. I'll put my email newsletter link in the description below. You guys will be the first to check it out and also like a very, very big discount. And I'll also send the free version to you. Anyways, all of that to say, in the budget setup that I highlight and I talk about, Camo is at the center of it. And it's a free app, another free app. And I just, it's so good. It's such a good app for video conferencing, for elevating your Zooms or your streams. I use it in a way where basically I set up my phone as my webcam and you can use Apple's uh, continuity camera to do this, but I'm not a big fan of doing it over Wi-Fi. And with a camo app, you can plug a USB into your iPhone and then plug the other end into your computer and you just have a much more stable connection of using your iPhone as your webcam. And then in camo, you can um, select the microphone you want to use. You can add different graphics. Um, you can adjust all of the settings like the white balance and all of those things. It's just a really great app. And the fact that it's free, if you want to unlock 1080 and 4K, you, don't, you do have to pay. Um, but yeah, the fact that it's free is just fantastic. I'm just a huge fan of that app. And so yeah, oof. 
I mean, we did a lot. I feel like we got through a lot of things. I didn't want to add apps that I'm like trying out or they're new and quirky and oh, I'm cool for finding this app. These are the apps that are like my tried and true. I've been using them for years and I just use them so much, right? So hopefully there was one or two that you can try out that's new to you. Some of the stuff that I have been trying out, uh, it's funny, I tried Arc. Uh, I'm very late to that trend. I hate it, I need tabs. I still use Google Chrome. Um, so Arc lasted for like one day and I'm like, do I need to just sit down and learn this better or is this bad? And I just think it's bad. I don't like it. Some of y'all are gonna be uh, mad at me for, for saying that. I'm still on the hunt for the perfect email app. I need to start taking email more seriously. And I tried Superhuman, um, gosh, I think it was like just around the pandemic, but then I was like, yeah, I don't need email. Email's not that important to me. Now I need to keep up with my email. Um, so I'm gonna try Superhuman again. Ironically, I'm actually an angel investor in Superhuman, so I should have been using it already, but email is just a very intimidating thing to me. So instead of like conquering it and figuring it out, I kind of have just always like shoved it aside. And uh, no more. I'm an adult, right? Seven or eight or nine months ago, I made a video talking about me moving away from Notion and using Apple Notes more. That resonated with a lot of people. And yeah, still to this day, it's the same workflow when it comes to um, videos that I'm making. They're much more just, I have an idea in my head and I do all of the note taking and then I just make them. So nothing about the pre-production of it like requires a team and I like it that way. It keeps it more intimate. So Apple Notes is perfect for that. And I just keep all of my notes for all of the things in Apple Notes. It's super quick, it's super handy, it's perfect. So I don't keep any of my personal notes or anything about videos or sponsors in Notion anymore, but what I still do use it for are my bigger projects where I am working with more freelancers, where it is more project oriented and more people are involved and there's just like so much content whether written or images or just, you know. So for the bigger projects, I'm still using Notion um, and I use it for one project right now, but everything else is Apple Notes. So a little follow up on that. That's still the same and yeah. Uh, this this was just like a fun little chill video. Gosh, I've just been at my computer writing so much, editing so much. So yeah, I was like, oh, I haven't done one of these in a while. Hopefully this, this will be helpful to you all. Um, and if it was, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, check out my Acuity scheduling link down in the description below. And until next time, everyone, stay peachy. Okay, bye.